can you hear me? Yeah, fantastic. There she is. Beautiful. Well, gentlemen, I have 10 o'clock here mountain. Like I said, it snowed last night. It can go from 70 degrees yesterday to it's got to be 28, 29 degrees right now, and it's still still snowing. I guess that's a bit of an analogy or a metaphor for how sometimes the intimacy, the sex, the physical connection, the love between us, right, between us and our partner or our separated spouse, or she already moved out, or, uh, you know, we're, she's stonewalling me and we're in this purgatory, she wants space mode. It can go from one, you know, from hot to cold really fast in a day, in an hour, in an instant. So I'll circle around to why are we doing these calls? You know, why am I here today? Why is Cynthia here today? And it's because Dan and Steve and the coaches, professional coaches and I got together about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and we wanted to support guys through this time of social distancing and the physical distancing, right? And a week ago when Cynthia and I did this, I said, we're not, phys we're not physically distancing from our spouse. We're actually closer to our spouse and have to be or forced to be if they're still in the house. Or I'm not able to move out, or she's not able to move out, or I'm going crazy because we're, <laughs> we see each other uh, you know, 24 hours a day now when it, when it was just a couple of hours a day until the weekend in the past. So how can we support guys? Well, I'm not here to sell anything. We're not here to sell anything at all. Um, if, if you want to talk with me and or Cynthia more ongoing, I'll have you put your email address into the chat box, and I'll say that again later. But this is to serve you guys. So I'm going to bring up a little uh, quick outline after I say hi again to Cynthia. And I've got a quick video that we're going to start with. I've, I found a little one-minute video from Frasier. How long has Frasier been off the air? I don't know. But it's, <laughs> it's a hilarious little video. So we'll start with Cynthia. So Ms. Cynthia Cruz has multiple degrees in this area. She and I met uh, about – it's been – for almost five years, like four years, four and a half years now, we met. And we both started our own private practice after leaving the world of teaching and mental health and working with families one-on-one. -on -one. We started our own practice. And uh, she's beautiful, smart, intelligent, and also happens to be my fiance. So say hi, Cynthia. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I said this last time, but I, I want to share that I am in deep gratitude to be to get to tap into this incredible community of men. I feel like this is a, an enormous gift. I appreciate your time. And I am even more excited today, just whether or not you celebrate Easter, this time of year has always kind of represented new things to me and new growth and new ways of doing things. And so to, to get the chance to sit here on this kind of day with you all is um, a wonderful thing. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, Cynthia, fantastic. Thank you very much. Good, okay. So let me, let me play with the screen share again here. I think I worked this out a little bit better since last time, but maybe not, we'll see. Uh, so sex, how good can it get? How can it get when, good can it get when we're in purgatory or we're yelling at each other or things are going well today, right? I think, I'm assuming we have guys in all kind of different situations here from we're not even in the same house and I want to reconnect again. And so what does that look like? Or we have sex once a month or maybe less or things over the past number of years have sex has been decreasing more and more and more. And uh, what can we do about that? What are some specific tools that we can give you? We're going to give you one gangbuster tool, which I'll spoil a little bit right now, which is called appreciation. Or I mean, I'm sorry, anticipation. Appreciation is good too. But, but the Gordian, the key to the Gordian knot is anticipation. We're going to talk about that more later. So some tools, we're going to use a matrix. We've got an awesome metaphor for you. And we'll talk about the different types of intimacy. Okay. But I want to jump right into uh, a clip from Frazier. So let me see if I can make this happen here. Let's see. Dad? Down here! Oh my God, Dad! Oh, I thought you'd capsized. No, I was lying in my chair. The squeaking was bugging Frazier. Oh. <gasps> the carpet is a whole shade lighter under there. <laughs> Except for those little black dots you just made. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I'm gonna get a towel. Yeah. No, I'll get it. No, it's all right, I'll get it. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, I'll get something to pick up oh, the grease. Clean it up. Oh, oh, oh. 
What the hell's happened? Now, don't get upset. I was oiling my chair trying to get rid of the squeak, and I had a little spill. A little spill? I just had this carpet cleaned. I'm sorry. It was an accident. Sure, Dad. It was an accident. It was an accident. I, I saw him step on it. Now, as you know as well as I do, there are no accidents. <laughs> just admit it, Dad. Your latent hostility toward me has been building through the years, little by little, until you have finally struck the Achilles heel of my decor, the Berber carpet. <laughs> I did not do this on purpose. No? Then I suggest you dig deep into the twisted caves of your subconscious where malicious acts abide, clothed in the robes of plausible excuses. For the last time, this was not malicious. It was an accident. I don't think you know the difference. Yes, I do. That was an accident. This is Malaysia! <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. My, <laughs> everything froze for about 10 seconds. So did everyone see, did you see the video, Cynthia? I can see your picture. Could you see and hear the video? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'm always a little terrified of that, especially I try not to click anything while it's going. But uh, yeah, let's see. Frazier said something along uh, malicious, malicious acts clothed in plausible excuses. Yeah. And uh, I, I wonder how many of us have experienced something like that. Either we currently are experiencing, you did that on purpose, or I can't believe you did this, or we're the man, uh, we're Frazier here, and we're overreacting and then bringing, up, bringing about the exact situation that we didn't want to happen in the first place. Okay, so this, this is going to lead into the, the two by two matrix of active and passive and masculine and feminine. So the active and passive are, I'm healthy, I'm in a healthy way connecting with my spouse or with my co-parent or with my girlfriend, or I'm not text bombing my uh, you know, separated spouse right now. That would be active, healthy. And then the passive would be more unconscious or more unhealthy. And I'd love for Cynthia to give your thoughts on this. Uh, the masculine, feminine, Poles of this and being conscious or unconscious of how we're coming across, right? The two by two matrix of active and passive. So Cynthia, I'd love for you to jump in and let me show this little picture here too. My, this is my amazing drawing abilities I always love to do. So active is more healthy and, and conscious and passive is unhealthy or unconscious. And we have the masculine and the feminine, whether this is the man acting in a strong, solid way, or he's acting like a child or a spoiled little boy, or he runs away and collapses, or the woman is acting in her healthy or unhealthy, unconscious areas. So, okay, so Cynthia, please give us your feedback on what does it look like for a woman to be in her more healthy, active, feminine versus unconscious or unhealthy feminine? Well, if the context today is a lot to do with sex, why don't I just start there? That um, I'm sure um, so many people and so many men have seen the the unhealthy feminine, where you know you as a man are reaching out and inviting connection, inviting physical intimacy, wanting to give her verbal connection because you know that's a big part of um, how she engages and wants to be in relationship. And those experiences of being shut down, of saying like, no, not now, or there's a bitter retort, um, or even the, you know, I'm not gonna have sex with you because X, Y, and Z. Um, that to me really symbolizes the feminine energy that's been, she's shut down and she has layers around her of protection and it's serving a purpose for her, probably helping her feel, um, safe and that she has some power but that's a really passive way to be in feminine energy when you are not actively inviting in the masculine who wants so much to do and be in good things with you um, and blocking that i feel is a very passive um, thing to do so the opposite side of that of the the active a healthy feminine is a woman who will communicate with you about her needs and desires. She loves to receive your attention and touch, loves to be in communication 
about how sex and sensuality can be greater, bigger, broader. Um, and we'll share with you, you know, her emotional range, everything from the tough emotions of anger, surprise, shock, pain, up to joy, excitement, and pleasure. And I say that not to be like, oh, like, oh, that's the perfect person. Why can't this happen in my life? But to put out there almost the vision of um, what I as a woman and what I would like to provide for other women of what that healthy, happy, excited, polar energy is like. Oh my gosh, I want, I want you to explain the extension cord metaphor here in a second. I want to tell everyone, uh, gentlemen that are on here listening, watching, go ahead and click on the participants button and raise your hand within Zoom to ask Cynthia a question. So we definitely will be opening up to questions here fairly shortly. And I'd love for uh, you, know, you to bring to reality what it is your situation is here, gentlemen. You know, we're here for you. We're here because today's Easter Sunday. It's a, it's a family holiday. Some of you may have been crushed over the past 24 hours not being together. And so let's use this time together with the now 64 people on here to have some emotional intimacy, some intellectual intimacy here together. That's what I really encourage us to do. So Cynthia, tell me about, tell us about your extension cord metaphor that we spoke about. Sure, well, there's so many things in our culture that are, are well known right now and are like the popular things to say. And I know it circles around that, you know, you know in terms of sex and physical intimacy, a woman or the feminine tends to love the verbal connection first and then is like that opens her that inspires her desire and then then she's like oh my gosh this has been verbal foreplay and i really want to connect now physically with my partner and then there's kind of this the common conception that on the other side the masculine might be more saying hey you want connection i want connection let's physically connect and then we can talk more and, and that's how I open up. I physically connect and then I feel open and ready to do that. And both sides are correct. It's just like one side is the, the cord from the lamp and it's got three prongs on it. And the other side is the cord from the, the extension cord that we're trying to plug it in and it only has two holes in it. And each party's kind of going like this, like, this is the right chord and this is the right chord and yet it's not quite uh, connecting. So what, what can a man do in that instance if he feels like he's trying to do the right things but it's not quite connecting? And that, so that's a segue into uh, some questions here. So we've got Dennis Block has raised his hand. And so Dennis, I'll have you jump in and ask Cynthia a question. We'll give him a couple seconds. And so Cynthia, if he doesn't answer right off, what can a man do to know, is he connected emotionally? Is he connecting physically? Is he connecting spiritually, experientially doing fun things together? How can he know where maybe he's falling short? Go ahead and answer that for us while, while Dennis finds his, uh... <laughs> let, me, let me see if I can unmute Dennis really fast. Dennis, are you there? Yes. Oh, there we go, good, okay, fantastic. So are I can't you ready? See, I can't see it though. I don't it's know. okay. It's all right. Go ahead and ask your question. We can hear you. Um, I've been in a relationship with a woman. We were both married, or we are still married. We're going through a divorce, and um, the sexual tension is there, always is, uh, constantly on the sexual level. But right now, she is living back with her husband, and I have left my wife and started my divorce process. And I'm trying to figure out what is the reason that she is still staying with her husband, even though she says she wants to leave? <laughs> that is that is a fantastic question, Dennis. Uh, it's a gigantic question, right? So mm -hmm. let's, let's dig into that a little bit right now, right? So the question of why isn't she leaving her husband when she said she would leave, uh, the sexual tension and the sexual spark between us is really strong. Well, this, the relationship has been going on for five years. Two years into the relationship, she did leave her husband, and I got deer in the headlights. So, so, tell me about deer so, in the headlights. 
I chicken shit it out and didn't move out when she moved out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, if, and for the sake of this topic, how did that affect the sex between you and, and her? Initially, the sex went down to just uh, oral sex. And recently, the within the last year, it has returned to uh, pretty, pretty routine. Whenever she gets an itch or I get an itch, we get together. Mm -hmm. So for our so topic, I, so Dennis, I just have to jump in for our topic today around sex. Do you have a question around, you know, it, you said at the beginning that the, it's really still hot between the two of you. And I would expect that's because you can't be together. Is So Esther Perel talks about how that passion and desire need space. They need air to fuel the fire and passion in between each other. And you certainly have that. And obviously this is a gigantic ongoing discussion we could have for over many sessions. For, uh, we could have for hours on this. Yeah, discussion. yeah. So do you have another specific question about uh, sex or how good it can get or a situational question about sex for Cynthia? Yeah, well, why is, my point is, is that if the sex is so good, how, how is it because she's afraid she enjoys the, the fair chase? Oh, That's a great that, question. Cynthia, go for it. Wonderful question. Do you right now, what is your, it's not, so you've got the, the physical part down. There are like other parts of connection that are really important. In the communica communication part? So and, yeah, there's the verbal and then there's, there's even the spiritual, like not necessarily like um, whatever your spirituality is, but kind of that deeper why why are we together um so i'm curious about how your your verbal intercourse is right now or is it just physical no it's ver very good verbal um in fact we are we have a very intimate emotional relationship for yeah. each other uh, she knows everything that's going on in my life i know everything that's going on in her life as for the spiritual, we're working on that. She's more um, religious, Catholic, mm -hmm. than I am. I'm more um, agnostic. I really don't practice religion. Mm -hmm. But as far as communication, uh, emotional attachment, that's all there. Mm -hmm. Okay. E everything's there with the exception that she tells me that she doesn't want to leave her husband right now because he has a condition, a medical condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. But on every level scale, in fact, I'll even add to that. Her husband knows about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the intimate relationship her and I have, like if someone, in her life the first person she calls is me yeah and vice versa so everything's physically there i feel but i can't figure out what as the saying goes still keeping this boat tied to the duck mm -hmm. sexually wise everything is we're we're, we're on the same level compatibility wise two things pop in my mind and 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 thank you. I'm, I feel in you, I feel that you have great compassion for her. I even feel you in great compassion for her husband who is ill. And I, I appreciate that in you very much. Um, I wonder first if you guys are very verbally connected, if you could sit down and ask her what's sticking for her. Um, a lot of times what is for the masculine, what feels like, oh, we've got the verbal thing going down, we've got all the needs met, that's like great in his world on his end of the cord. Mm -hmm. And the woman tends to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more like water, like she'll be like, yeah, yeah, this is working, this is fine, and she may not, come forthright with something that she's needing different. So I'm curious about having first a, a come 
you know, come to yourself with what am I really wanting here? What do I want to have happen and get clarity on that? And then asking her to sit with you and saying, hey, this is my vision for both of us. This is what I want. And ask her what she feels about that, what's getting in the way. And then it's kind of a time to decide, are you going to kind of stay true with what you're wanting and she comes along for the ride or if she doesn't and can't really tell you um, what you like that she wants to do that, what will you do from there? Dennis, thank you for your question. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump over to um, someone. No, else. jump on to somebody else. I think it was a very good I think Cynthia gave me a very good answer. Fantastic. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate it. So we'll do one more and then I want to bounce uh, another question to Cynthia. But one more Christian, you got your hand up. Chris, let me see if I can unmute you here. There we go. Are you there, Christian? I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Thanks. please. Yeah, fantastic. I, I did. I did like that uh, representation that Cynthia showed about you know the masculine, feminine, the passive, and the and the active side, and and putting in this language, I'm confronted with a lot of the passive, feminine kind of uh, behavior, and I really don't know how to counter it. I really don't know how to address it you know there is you know, she wouldn't talk she doesn't want to you know answer a question you know it, it feels like she's just behind multiple walls oh. Every, everything everything is is everything is is quiet and nice if i do the beta thing you know i mm -hmm. i clean i help out that's all fine but when it comes to raising my hand and saying, hey, I want to have some energy, I want to have some fun in this relationship as well, you know, it's just this zero response. I just cannot get her to relate to it in, in any way. Yeah. So I, what, what, what are my options at this point in order to intelligently address this? I realize that I go into my own passive <laughs> responses you know that's obviously not counterproductive nonetheless i i have to somehow handle a, a large amount of resentment as well that i have to somehow diffuse and keep you know draining off on a constant basis so i i, I need to find more effective ways of of dealing with this or or we're not going to go anywhere that's kind of my my thoughts yeah well, thank you for sharing that. And I appreciate your clarity around, it's like, you know, you can do the beta thing or not. And it's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like I need something different here. I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind doing it, right. But it doesn't go beyond it. You know, I don't, I don't mind doing the, the service and all of that. And it, it, it does occasionally get a little recognized, but, but really not as a door opener to a, a deeper conversation. It's just kind mm -hmm. of, thank you. What's next. And it's a little deflating. So at some point I'm gonna go, how much of this am I, am I willing to continue doing if there's just no resonance? Oh my, totally. And that's a big, a day, like daily feeling deflated. That's a lot of energy yeah. to push through. So I, there, there are some things to start activating different kind of energy, but first, it's really important for us to be in a place of clarity about what we're truly wanting that energy to look like, sound like, feel like. What is it that is our vision for that? Because when we're really, really clear, when we're not just accepting the crumbs that someone else is gonna give us, when we're standing in our own of, God, I want, I wanna share a touch like this. I wanna share a conversation like this. I wanna feel, happy and excited in my chest. I want, you know, sex and energy with my partner to move both of us. When you hold that, then you can go back and start requesting and dropping little uh, drops of water in the bucket. So for example, the energy of anticipation for a woman is huge. Um, it's like, again, it's one of those cultural things where we talk about, oh, well, women need more foreplay. The anticipation to a connected time with you or a fun event with, for you is almost as fun 
and wonderful for a woman as like the actual having sex. So it's like once you get clear on what you want, it's how can we start adding a little bit of anticipation into your wife's world? Even if she doesn't respond right away, it could start with a simple phrase of, hey, I'm really looking forward to spending time with you Friday night, or I'm really looking forward to going on a walk and holding your hand. And again, she may not initially move in that, but it's hold my vision and then keep adding in little, uh, little bits of energy along the way. So Christian, how does that hit you when she says that? Have you, you know, I, I in my mind, I'm wondering if Christian's going to think I've tried that or <laughs> I have questions about that, right? So go ahead. <laughs> you're reading, you're reading my mind. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I, you know, perhaps I wasn't quite as if, if effective in uh, clearly, you know, and uh, maybe maybe clumsy along these ways as well. But but yes, the thought that comes to mind is I've I've tried a gazillion things and 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 somehow I just seem to be barking up the wrong tree. It just even if it sputters for a moment, it doesn't seem to sustain. And uh, I just need I need to find the clarity in figuring out you know what am I doing wrong or do I, am I doing something wrong in this you know and 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 where do I where do I draw the line of, of, of just investing, investing into what feels like an unsatisfying, <laughs> or at, at least the outlook doesn't look exactly very promising. Well, I so, think uh, what you just said about finding your own clarity, clarity in a man is enormously attractive. So your clarity is your first step of what you're needing, what you're wanting, and what you're willing to put up with, and what you're willing to create. About what I want, I have, I have total clarity. I don't seem to be able to communicate this in an effective way. So tell mm -hmm. us right now, Christian, so what do you want in a relationship with your wife? What do you want? Well, I want, I want uh, my, my key um, values, you know, Tony Robbins style values are love and adventure. So I want to I want to I want to do things that are that are uh, in, instructional, you know, uh, travel, learning, etc. But I want to do this with a partner who is on board, mm -hmm. you know, who Klein and sinker, you know, that that participates in 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 my emotional world, and I'm participating in her emotional world and physical world as well. I want a level of attunement and a level of openness in, in, in that relationship. We have had, uh, you know, a, a number of, especially recently, a number of vacations, you know, where I put a lot of effort into put things together with the kids and family, et cetera. Right. And then, you know, to give you a metaphor, you know, she, she would arrive, you know, and just go straight to bed and she's tired, you know, and it just basically just walks, metaphorically walks right past me and it just totally crushes me. Because I, I I put in this effort, you know, I try to make it as as nice and as enjoyable as I can for her, the kids, and everyone, and I'm just being ignored. Mm. So, so, so Cynthia, I, I don't really he, know. Yeah, thank you. That's a fantastic example. So Cynthia, how could he ask in the place that you feel that he's in at this moment? How could he take a small step forward and ask specifically for what he wants in a way that? She may not love in that exact moment, but that she'll respect over time as he consistently asks in a calm way, of course, in a compassionate way. But what can he ask specifically for her, of her? So it's holding out the vision of what you want for your relationship. So it's, it's saying to her, hey, I, I really want to be in a relationship where we talk about things together would you sit down with me today at three and let's have a conversation and she may say no but it's a every request is like this is what i'm wanting for our relationship and sharing like if, if women are they communicate and they're most honorable to their emotions even sharing you know it it kind of hurts when you walk past me like this i want to be in a relationship where we acknowledge each other and I can touch you on the shoulder as you walk by. Let's 
tell me more about that. Tell me what's going on. Help me understand. Have you tried that, Christian? And then I want to ask Cynthia a question about a client that she and I both work with that sounds like a similar situation. And, and I, I, see some, I see some in the comments as well that, you know, that seems to be sort of a thing that <laughs> I'm certainly not, not, standing, I'm not standing alone, right? And I, I totally understand what you're saying. And, and this, is, this is an ideal, an ideal situation. And I'm, I'm trying to make efforts into going into, into that direction and, and, and get it done. So, in, you're, so you're asking if, what is the way that she tries to create space? Or, or any man can create space when the monotony of, you know, it's, it's like, you know, because I, I was very affectionate. I would come up behind her and, and hug her and, and kiss her neck, you know, and she, eventually she said, you know, it just feels like you want sex every time you do that. And that's, that's not what I felt like. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure, I went, sure, it would be great, you know. Hey, but, this is my end of the cord. It's still the right end. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you know, and stuff like that. Whereas I just wasn't approaching it the way she imagined it should have been done. And I, I see a lot of where I wasn't doing things. I mean, there's, 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 you know, certainly nice guy issues all over the place that I'm correcting now. But by the time, you know, again, you know, that she set her timeline, it expired, she's gone. You know, she's off having these intimate relationships with other men now um, that were separated. Um, and so it's really just more of an, I wanted to understand like, if you're in a long-term relationship, what types of things you know, do people do or healthily can be healthily done to sort of create that, that, you know, mysterious space, even though you're together every single day, you know, or whatever, or, or do you have to live in two separate houses like people are now? And so you know, you're artificially creating the, I don't get to see you much. So when I do, I'm really horny. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Well, anytime I think of me needing to create space as a woman and a feminine being it's a re really about me tapping into what what's my values what's my purpose in this world what's what are the visions that are really important to me and as a woman that's a way for me to kind of keep that like oh this is who i am because it is really easy for us to kind of join and combine with the masculine in our life. Um, I, I'm sh Jeff has some wonderful feedback, I'm sure, about how you as a man would do that. But in general, like creating that space, like there are certain routines that you can share, like a Sunday morning coffee time with someone where it's like a little mini date where you talk about your relationship. So it's bringing a little bit of less mundane and this is a special time together it's having um you know going on that that date and it's almost like you're wearing you as you put on the different clothes it's like you're wearing a different energy you're really leaning into your masculine presence to invite the woman that you're with to be in her feminine yeah and, and i think that's that's the challenge for me is because we went on dates. I took her out on dates. We'd get dressed up. We'd go to the theater, you know, and at some point it just took a turn where that wasn't enough anymore. That mm -hmm. didn't create any spark or anything. It's just, you know, so, you know, I sort of got lost in like, I don't know what the magic trick is anymore. Um, yeah, let me jump know, in, Greg. And, and, yeah. I want to jump in. So I've reset my Wi-Fi, so hopefully I should be good now. Uh, I love what you talked about putting on different energy, different suit of clothes, but Greg, you're saying, well, what am I missing? And I'm starting to find out that specifically asking for what you want is what's missing. So many, many men on here uh, have stopped making giant mistakes. You know, they're reading No More Mr. Nice Guy or Hold On To Your Nuts by Robert Glover or Wayne Levine or that kind of thing. Um, in the chat earlier was talked about covert contracts and how do I stay away from those? You know, I'm not going on vacation or taking her out so I can get sex. It's because that's the kind of man that I am and the fun that I want to have. So Greg, I mean, she's not here, obviously, and, and it doesn't matter what her quote reasons are. But to your question right. of what you could have done specifically is to say something like, and, I, and I've said this before, to say something like, uh, 
I'd love for you to allow me to lead tonight. Or I'd love for you to uh, fall into my arms in the next hour because you laugh so hard. Or I would love for you to blank, okay? And so it depends on where you are on what I call the stairs of intimacy, whether it's emotional or sexual. I was at the bottom. <laughs> so, I mean, so, so, yeah, I mean, and, yeah. That, and that answer, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't need to have you go on much because I know yeah. exactly where I was. So I, was me, yeah. the, I was. I was the, what do you want to do tonight? Trying uh, to please, you know, what do, putting all the work on her, thinking I was trying to just nail down, like, what do you like, you know, and, and getting down to the frank sex is like, you know, it's the, every time's different. Like, you know, if you ask her, what's, what are you into tonight? I don't know. It's different every time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so at that point, you know, my, you know, and the, and the classic example I use is that, you know, I would ask for it. She would actually agree. I say, well, I'll see you upstairs in 20 minutes. You know, I'd go upstairs. Hour later, she'd come up. She'd get in her nightgown. She'd get in bed and turn over. And it's like, did she forget? Did she not want, like, you know, and so instead of leading them, Mm, and saying yeah. walking over and saying hey remember what we just talked about i just resented i sat there and said she doesn't want me right. i'm you know you know so i led in that i in another meeting i called that that's where we reject ourselves like we get a rejection but they never said it. they were never even said yeah no. exactly we that's sort no. of the that's the <laughs> passive masculine you said no to yourself yeah. you know you're, yeah. you're so i mean yourself. i'm i'm getting better there and that helps and i just wanted to make sure you know, especially when you're dealing with, you know, the idea that, you know, 70% of women initiate divorce, 90% of college educated women initiate divorce, you know, <laughs> type of thing. And that's what happened to me. And we're blind to it until it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. being, making sure that with all this new TED Talks and stuff thrown at them of you need this, you need that, that this is still the, the path. No, everything we've been talking here is still the right way to go. And it sounds like it is. I just... It was nice to hear it from the two of you. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful segue. Yeah, you're welcome. Jeff, you Jeff. muted yourself. Muted Jeff, myself. Sorry. Can you hear me, yeah. can you hear me now? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to share the screen. I think it muted me. Uh, no, I, I just found a great new book. I'm about halfway through called The Masculine in Relationship. Actually, Dan Dore recommended it to me. It's, his last name is Youngblood, the author. So The Masculine in Relationship. And I wanna read really quickly a quote uh, that that last question here segued us into very well. So let me bring up, I actually typed this up earlier. Here we go. Cynthia, give me a thumbs up. Can you see that? Yes. Awesome. So, and if your woman is second guessing you and constantly telling you what to do, it's not going to feel good to you as a man. It could be tiring. Yeah, no kidding, right? So at that point, you have three choices. One is to surrender to her lead and become emasculated. The second is to fight back, and that generally leads to a horrible relationship or a parting of ways. And fight back, meaning blame her, shame her, tell her she's not doing enough, that kind of thing. And third is your option is to become the masculine leader she craves. And that does not mean just being in charge, it means offering your lead while incorporating all of her input, capability, and wisdom, all in service of inviting her back into her feminine energy and those delectable feminine behaviors that you love. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can even see if she came up an hour later, uh, I'd probably have gone and met her at the 20 minute mark, right? <laughs> and if she came up an hour later and put on her nightie or whatever it was, I'd probably step up out of the bed and meet her halfway to the bed and see where it goes from there, right? I'm not expecting it to be a home run necessarily, but I wanna show her some intimacy. I wanna hold my hand out so she puts her hand in mine. You know, I wanna touch her nightgown if, if that's something that she's cool with at this point, right, Greg? So it's, you know those things are true, of course. It's just the, hey, maybe you just need permission to, to step into that role, you know? And Greg, you're still there, I see, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, I think I think I mean, I, as I said, the crisis she went through made me. I went into a place of feeling guilty, like mm -hmm. I couldn't step up. Like she didn't come up because maybe her mind is on this issue, and you know, and and so what happened was is it went on so long that I sort of disconnected completely. Yeah. And she found a guy that was having great sex with his mistress, and she thought that's what I want. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> understandably yeah. so, you know, and so it, it wasn't until, you know, it's like, hey, if I had been doing this work a year ago, we'd probably still be together because I could have stepped out of that zone. But I got so deep into that resentment, disconnection zone, it was not savable. Yeah. Greg, how long has it been? Because your, your, you know, attitude and your, your humor and your emotions, everything is really I, positive and fantastic today. How long has that been? I, I, I've heard that from, I heard that from a woman last night when I was on a video call. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, I've been, I've been with Steve for two months now, Steve Horseman. Um, you know, but I was doing a lot of work before that, you know, uh, and I'll call it my past, present, future strategy. I have a therapist for past. Um, I'm with the Mankind Project. I've done initiation with the Mankind. I don't know if you're familiar gotcha. with that. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I made some great friends there because uh, I didn't have a lot of male friends. And yeah. then the future is Steve. He's helped me navigate yeah. towards where I'm going. So I love it. That's, so, yeah. that's very cool. Great, Greg. I appreciate that. Yeah, therapy is a lot about looking at the past and digging. Where coaching is just acknowledging that. And then how do we utilize that to move forward and move forward to, toward what we want in our life? And, you know, we hold the torch up so you don't fall down the pit with the spikes at the bottom, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Cool. Oh, awesome, thank you. Man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, you're welcome. Great. I like that book. I'll, I'll, I'll add that to my list. Good, good. Fantastic. Thank you. So I want to read a question from chat. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said his, his wife is there. <laughs> his wife is, uh, you know, so he can't ask the question because his wife is there. So here, here we go. My wife is in the other room, LOL. Yeah. My wife and I have two small kids and we are older parents. Our sex life has sucked in terms of frequency, enthusiasm, and variety for about four years. Wow, okay. <laughs> We're older parents, two small kids, sucked in terms of frequency, enthusiasm, and variety for about four years. And as I forgot, and as I've gotten frustrated, I've been well mean, I've been mean. Some of it legit and a lot of it being, me being an asshole. I've been working on the stuff from Steve's book and others lately, concentrating on myself, and I think it's going well. How do I know when to try to initiate sex again? And how do I go about it? How do I know when trust is rebuilt enough to you and um, to use how my wife puts it? She wants trust to be rebuilt enough prior to sex, is kind of how I'm reading this, as his wife puts it. So Cynthia, what would you say to that to start off with? And I have thoughts too, so please. Sure. Um, so that whole, thank you for sharing that, um, that, that sounds familiar. Like the woman saying, oh, well, you have to build back my trust, right? Before we're going to be physical. Um, that says a lot to me. Um, there's two things here. There is the, how can intimacy be built in really small ways? Like the touch on the shoulder, the, um, you know, holding the hand on the couch, just thinking that looks like little steps of intimacy you're building up physically, but also to, to, to have conversations with asking, like, tell me more about that. When you say, like, my trust needs to be, um, you need to build your trust, help me, help me understand what you're meaning by that. And it, then it's just time to kind of listen to um, what is there at the table and and keep trying to like let's dig underneath okay tell me more tell me more about that because it's the verbal intimacy the her ability to share with you honestly even some of the tough stuff that for a woman to just kind of get it all out on the table in in that kind of way is is how she builds trust how she builds um confidence and and that's in all of her relationships whether it's with women or men yeah i agree with you so yeah i agree with you so there's this i'm just hearing myself let's see there's two big pieces to what you just said cynthia that i heard as well which is um here's how we can move forward here's the conversation we can have and she also is going to have these things that she wants to share whether she's going to do that today or tomorrow or next week or if she feels right now she's never going to share that with you those are some things you want to tap in, tap into. Absolutely. So let's give an example. Um, you know, uh, I'll say caller. So caller, you've said some of it been legit about you being mad and a lot of it, me being an asshole. And I definitely was there. And, and Cynthia and I, of course, have talked about this extensively and I'm, I'm happy to be vulnerable with you guys, but definitely in the past, in my past relationship, there was a lot of anger that I had come up. 
Um, it wasn't about sex specifically, but about, let's say disappointments, okay? Lots of different disappointments in different ways. And for me, energy would shoot up the back of my neck and my head would get tight and I'd get tunnel vision and that's when the anger would come, right? So that was my physiological precursor, if you will, which hopefully you know, caller, what it feels like in your body right before you get angry and become that asshole. Because I, I learned how to figure that out. I learned how to identify that within myself and practice how not to just to let the asshole come out, how to not have the Hulk come out. And uh, if, if y'all on the call here want to, know more about that shoot me a text or or i mean send me a a, a chat and, and we'll talk more specifically about that but with her with your wife caller there is going to she is going to need to put on the table that you've been an asshole okay? and and i don't know that that's the case and it's going to be kind of hard to go back and forth you know here over chat but let's I, i'm assuming that it hasn't really been flushed out that you've been an asshole because of the way you typed it. And so that's something that you might just own up to, to be honest. You know, during one of these conversations you have, like Cynthia recommended, you might say, hey, I wanna own up to something. And it's not so she swoons or, you know, pats you on the head or says, oh, that's okay, sweetie, you know, and then gives you a blowjob on the spot. It's not for that. It's, it's for you just to apologize for being that asshole in those different moments, right? So. I, Okay, he says I have owned up to it. That's good. I have owned up to it. So the, I would say without us being able to talk more here, once you've owned up to it, you're not attached to her giving you a blowjob on the spot. It's those bits of intimacy, the asking for the bits of intimacy that you want. And we're so, that seems to be a theme today, is that we're so afraid to ask for what we want that we just fall back into this passive, dead fish, doormat, fucking boring masculinity if you can even call it at that moment right when asking for what we want is a little risky and guess what that's fun a little risky is fun and it shows you have balls and that you understand what you want and you're going to go for what you fucking want in the world so sorry i swore a little bit there i'm passionate about that of asking for what you want you know stepping up into your into just your life you know what else are you going to do just not say anything i guess you could try that go ahead cynthia what's Could your I thoughts on that? That? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that what you just said, Jeff, about stepping up and asking for what you want and really being in masculine energy. I just want to share that from the feminine perspective, masculinity in its true self, owning itself, asking for what it, what it wants is the most incredible gift that you could give anyone in your life. But I, I want to share when, when a man is standing in his masculine, in full ownership, in rootedness, connection, it, to me, it, it feels, you know, like you're walking in a redwood tree forest. It's that majestic and it's that grounding to me. So I really just wanted to offer that. So because I think we are all, you know, we grow up in a certain way and, and parts of us you know someone might not like or tell us that's wrong but when we're offering that truest essence of ourselves that truest feminine that truest masculine it's like being handed the world so i just want to share that well, let me ask you a question about that so if a man asks but he asks in an attached way or he's upset or he's like blaming or really frustrated how does that come across um, well, one, one thing I'll notice a lot is like facial expressions. So if it's kind of like with some resentment there, which of course there, that's human and normal, but I, I can see the resentment in that person's face that, um, makes me kind of shut down and pull in. Um, and if there's like the attachment of like, I want this, I need you to give this to me, why aren't you giving it to me? It uh, actually makes my stomach feel kind of ill. And I'll say that with the humility that um, high school, most of my 20s, in my own attachment of like, I need, I want from you, I experienced partners not wanting to 
have anything to do with me. People not wanting to date me um, because I, I was in that kind of energy or um, being in relationships where they would get kind of bored of my energy because I wasn't living in my full feminine and asking for what I want. So I have been on that side of the other person going, hmm, what you're carrying around and not owning is, is a deterrent to me. So. so that motivated you to do your own work around your femininity. Yeah. Yeah. Actually at that point, um, I realized there was something I really needed to change in myself. And I took two years off just from any type of dating or intimacy. And I actually worked with a mentor and a sex coach. And a lot of that was me looking at the things that were most feminine about me that I thought maybe were weak or not valued, or I'd heard messages that it was not who I should be. And that coach and mentor guided me to go, like, this is you, you are the, a gift and asking for what you need and standing in your truth is a highly needed and respected energy. And moving into that as a woman, that's when I started to have the connected, deep, um, communicative relationships that I had craved for forever and ever. So. Oh, thank you, fantastic. So I'm gonna go to those who have their hand raised. I'm gonna call on John here in a second. Again, if you wanna ask a question of me or Cynthia or both of us, go to participants and then raise your hand within Zoom here and I'll call on you, or if you wanna put it in the chat, or if you guys wanna email us directly because you don't wanna field the question here or we don't have time, type your email address into the chat and we will touch base with you and you can ask Cynthia a question or me a question, you know, no strings attached, All right? So let me call on John here. John, can I just unmuted you, can you hear me, bud? Yes, can you hear there me? There he is, yeah, go for it. All right, well, it's nice to see your pretty faces again, both of you. Uh, Hi, okay. Uh, I want to go in my present situation for a moment. Um, and uh, Dennis Collins is my coach, and he said something recently to me. He said, uh, she doesn't get to have sex with me, which was kind of an interesting thought. Um, so we're not having sex um, right now. But I want to go back in time like a year. Um, my wife has an incredible amount of stress in her life. Um, she's, she's like a, a Girl Scout troop leader and she's a student, she's a teacher, she has a couple other jobs and got three kids and just quite a lot of stress. Um, and, and she's also uh, like on an antidepressant, which is itself uh, you know, a, a libido reducer or whatever, uh, affects sex drive. So um, there would be things frequently like I would we'd be in bed and I would start touching her and I'd get things like, I don't want to be touched right now, or I want to go to sleep, and just rejection after rejection after rejection was kind of common. And once in a while, once in a while, maybe like once a month, I consider once a month good at that point, um, something would happen. Um, so, and for me, for me uh, in my life, when I have high anxiety, like sex and masturbation will just like reduce it or just eliminate it. So, but for her, sex isn't even an option when her anxiety runs rampant, which is frequent, like every day, just about. Um, so anyways, um, look at my notes here. Back in the day, back in the day when we were like uh, in college days or, or newlyweds or whatever, she was horny as fuck. Like we were, it was awesome. <laughs> and, um, and that was like part of her that's just up and gone at this point. Um, and then, you know, sex became more of a chore. And of course, the kids, you know, are all over the place. And there's that issue. So my question effectively is, um, when my, my question is, how do you break through such, such high amounts of stress and such low sex drive um, from my wife? And it is rampant up other issues, but just focusing on that for a second, what would you suggest? Sure. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I, I actually can really relate to that because when I'm, um, when I'm very stressed out, like I, I got to get things done, 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 and I don't have as much on my plate as your, your wife does, I feel like my whole body like shuts down and I'm just not in that energy at all. So I understand that that 
is a very real thing for for women. I see it almost as a shift of like they're not being in feminine energy. They're actually being very masculine right then because it's like, get it done. Come on, I got to be on top of this. Um, when, and I'll use myself as an example, when I am not touching into what I desire in my life as a woman, it's like I lose oxygen. Like feminine energy lives, breathes, and a lot is alive on desire and deepest desire and what she wants to create and do in her life. And it's, um, it's a, like a daily thing. So what really helps me is when, if I'm in that mood, someone to ask me like, hey, what is it, what is it you're most wanting right now today in this moment? Or um, I, you know, I would really love to, you know, take you away on this like adventure tonight. And it kind of shifts me out of that to do mode and into a place of like, oh, this is lovely. And I can put on earrings and brush my hair. Um, when I say that, do you see your wife being receptive to either that question or that prompt, or do you think she'd still be really like shut down in her anxiety? Well, we would, um, well, one of my failures in my 14 years of marriage is frankly just not going on enough dates. And I've realized that a little too late, <laughs> for sure. Um, but, you know, I would, I'm all for getting a babysitter and going on a date, um, and it wouldn't, you know, always end up in sex or whatever. But um, she's always been, even, even when things were starting to go south, she was up for dates and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, one time, this last it was December. I dropped six hundred dollars on uh, VIP tickets to Cirque du Soleil, and we had a, we had a good time. But you know, that was that. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was a little awkward because it was, uh, I don't know, a, a big investment with not a lot of romantic connection. So, anyways, that aside, um, I guess my answer is yes. I guess I don't know. So it's like it doesn't have to be like the big things all the time. And, and I want to go back and say, you didn't fail because you didn't do enough dates. Um, you were doing life and connecting the way that it made sense for you. And it's, we're not taught this at any time in our lives. It's not like we were sitting in middle school and be like, okay, this is relationship 101. And this is like the three steps that you do. So we all are doing the very best we can. It's the little things that move a woman into her feminine. Um, it's the, you know, walking behind her and just gently like stroking her hair or saying like, hey, you look really beautiful today. And I, I'll say this, like this whole call has been like, here, here's how you can invite her in. Here's the feminine. A woman is like self-differentiated and it's my job as a woman to practice, oh gosh, I'm being super like, Rant, like a bull here trying to get things done. I need to kind of touch back into myself. So I offer these things um, as, as a way to connect and invite, but in no way do I mean that it, you did not do your job because you didn't do them. It just means that there's hopes and little steps along the way for your relationship or any future relationships that you have. Okay. So when you think of doing like little, little things um, for your wife, what little things do you imagine um, through just like small touches or small conversations? Well, you talk about the extension cord thing and that's, uh, for me, I, was, I, I finally got around to leaving uh, Five Languages of Love, which uh, although my psychologist friends tells me is somewhat crap, but uh, still is useful <laughs> for the masses. Um, and I realized that um, uh, for years and years and years, I was being um, doing acts of service, um, all sorts of things, even yesterday. Um, and what she was needing was, or her primary thing, uh, I believe, is um, words of affirmation, which I, mm. I, I dropped the ball on that. I'm not going to, I'm going to own up to it. I just dropped the ball on telling her, um, you know, how beautiful she is and all this stuff. Um, 
And uh, meanwhile, I was like building chicken coops and stuff. So it's uh, not not the same not the same thing. So uh, I I guess yeah. I need I I guess I've I've learned that I need to do more of that. Um, it's a little hard now. Um, I don't quite know how to do it when things are so awkward right now. But uh, I'm thinking about it, which is good. Um, one of it, overall, like I failed it. And let me just read this some of this text that I pulled up. I was starting to, to make some changes last October, and she sent me this text out of the blue. She says, for years I have felt undesirable, unwanted, and unattractive. I told you for years I felt like only a roommate you fucked every now and then. I felt like I was a burden on our lives and our family. Finally, I'm at my wit's end, and then you start doing things you said I've been doing all along, and so on and so forth. So I have failed to make you feel attractive um, and uh, desirable, I guess, which is kind of, that was a shock to me. I was like, what? What, what about all these things I've done? What about, you know, and, and oh, that's, the, that's this, that's the, so I'm learning. Can I, um, can I pause you there for a moment? I, I yeah. wish every time that you said I, the word I failed, I wish I could like send like a rubber dart through and be like, no, you didn't fail. <laughs> you, just, you didn't know. <laughs> She's also responsible for herself. Um, so right now, if it's still awkward, it's the time again, like w w we talked before last time of you building your vision. What are you wanting as a man? And then everyone in our world appreciates verbal affirmation. Um, it, when you're in the grocery store, it's like the checkout clerk woman who has been working 10 hours and um, tell her, hey, you, you have a, a lovely shirt on, or I really like your earrings. I mean, that's just the gift of to be to have a woman be seen no matter what she is, whether she's you know five year old five years old in a cute little dress or eighty five years old, and you you know you notice something about her that that's a spiritual practice that you can just give the world, and that's going to help you own the sense of like I am I've done a good job I've been doing the best I can I'm learning this kind of love language and I'm giving it to to the world because I'm I'm a amazing person and my masculinity is a, a gift to everyone sometimes okay. it's easier it's easier to give it to the cashier at the grocery store about her <laughs> earrings than it is you know your own wife sometimes and that's the practice out in the world that you can do you know guys ask me how do I practice this when sh she reacts this way or that way or this way um, obviously, right this moment, we're not able to talk talk to as many people out in the world as we normally would, uh, at least not going to store to store or, or work. But that practice of honoring other people in our life, you can do that all the time, just like Cynthia said. And what's really interesting is you'll get a lot of great responses from people. And when you get a kind of maybe a shitty response from your spouse, that's something that you, that's the practice for you of to not collapse into the resentment. Or like Cynthia said, she can see the resentment on your face or if you become needy and things like this. So that, that's the practice. That's the stair step into where you want to be. Okay. Well, thank you for chatting with me. I'll let somebody else go. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. So we've got a, a a uh, question over chat here, which is, is a bit of the opposite question. I think most men would want to, uh, this gentleman's name is Udi. I think most men on here would want to uh, slap Udi in the face because he's asking his wife has recently, her libido has just recently kicked in, kicked up again. <laughs> and he's not as into sex as she is right now. And, but he wants to keep the flame. So he doesn't want, so he, let me, let me modify the question a tiny bit. How can a man, maybe if he's not feeling it right now, turn a woman down? Or how can we say this another way? What if he's upset and he's just not ready for intimacy right now? And how can he let his woman know that it's something that he needs to work on or he needs to process? And in Udi's example, maybe he just needs time to go sleep or take a shower. But <laughs> let's, let's make it pertinent to most men on the call here is how can he kind of let her down and still stay connected? I think with women preferencing things with, hey, I, I really want to be with you right now and 
I'm really tired and I really need some personal time. Um, and then setting a, like, I would love to connect with you at a future time and actually being more specific about that. Like, I'd love to connect with you Tuesday night. So right there, you're letting her know it's not that she's undesirable. It's not that you're turned off by her. Then you're saying, well, <laughs> the wrong finger. Um, <laughs> then you're saying um, what you're needing and you're... Hello, looks really good, aren't you? Go ahead, Cynthia, Oops. that wasn't me, go for it. Okay, and, and then you're saying like, what's true for you and, and I know, you know, some women do not handle the vulnerability in their partner well, but I certainly appreciate when someone is human and just, oh, they get tired too, okay, I'm not the only one. And then third, you're making, you're taking that masculine role of like, okay, here's the plan for when we're gonna reconnect in the future specifically. Mm -hmm. So the understanding where she's coming from, that connection emotionally first, then sharing something true about you, even if it's embarrassing or vulnerable. And then- Oh yeah, and even- Yeah, oh, sorry. I was gonna say, and then circle to a plan. So that's the masculine part you added at the end is, that's how I can be more in my active masculine is, okay, so here's the plan when we're gonna touch base again or reconnect again. You know, how does that sound to you? Would you ask that at the end? I, guys ask me that question. Should I ask at the end, how does that sound to you? Should I ask for permission at the end or for her to modify that? How would you think in the instance of sex in this particular scenario? Well, I like, I like the how does that sound to you, but I think that needs to be a, um, if a woman's in her feminine, just ask, Asking her like that's such a thank you for thank you for asking me um but if she's more masculine i would be more masculine and say like hey let's let's connect on tuesday mm, to try to lead her more toward the feminine side of the relationship yeah yeah gotcha yeah. that makes perfect sense that's fantastic and I, I really appreciate jeff you model for me really well you'll say hey this is kind of embarrassing and and i really appreciate that you do that your humanness and you also invite me it's like oh as a partner I can just stay hey this I'm a little embarrassed by this so yeah I mean uh, all of us on here <laughs> so I'll say something embarrassing after that thank you Cynthia I appreciate it <laughs> uh, I mean all of us guys on here have been to the point where like hey maybe we're not able to keep an erection or things aren't going great in the bedroom or it's been a month since we had sex before and the last time we talked we had a big fight and now it's not going great in the bedroom. How do I deal with that? I mean, it's, it's every, <laughs> so many messy situations in life. Like, just call it out. It's okay, right? It, it, to, to Cynthia's point, John, it's not your failure. It's your learning. It's not her fault. It's not your fault. It's the messiness of life. And that, that's what I hope that we can bring to sex is that <laughs> maybe not literally messy, or maybe it is literally messy, uh, but it's, it's, it's emotionally messy, and that's okay. Like, it's not supposed to be fucking perfect. It's not... It's not a porn that you turn on and turn off, you know? It's not a porn where you turn it on and, oh, wow, look how she's into this guy and they had no emotional connection whatsoever at all. That's, you guys know that's not real, right? So turn that shit off and, and start to write what I do want in the world. Actually, let me ask you, Cynthia, about, I, I asked you the other day about uh, men think that, you know, well, what, well, what about a woman having a one night stand? You know, there's not emotional connection there. There's no relationship there. What about a woman wanting just sex and having a one night stand? What would you say to that? You, you answered me the other day, go for it. <laughs> well, there's, there's a scenario where I imagine where it's like two college, you know, a college guy and a college girl and they're kind of at level one. And it's like the whole, you're, you're cute. And she's like, oh, you're hot. And then, and then they go sleep together. How and is that again? How is that? Oh, you're <laughs> She goes, oh, you're hot. <laughs> um, and that's, that's the end of it. But we're all beyond that. And I would say even with when one night stands, there always has been some emotional connection first. There's been that verbal foreplay. Um, evolutionarily wise, it does not make sense for a woman to jump into bed with someone that she doesn't have like an, an energetic sense of. Like, 
it just wouldn't be a wise thing to do. So she is always kind of connecting and feeling the energy and hearing that your resonance of voice as a man and going, oh, okay, this is, and, and they can connect to my emotions and they hear my story and they have some humanness as part of them. And um, she can feel like the masculinity in you, the frame you're holding, and she can surrender to that. And that's, you know, if she has that, then then the one night stand happens. It, it, in my opinion, it, it's hard for that to happen unless there's been some sort of connection first. Yeah. Well, one, one thing uh, that was put in the chat here was that some women are not as receptive or open to vulnerability. And so maybe they are at that level one that you were saying. Um, you, you, you equated it to college and I agree with that. Well, maybe, we're, maybe she or I were stuck there, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we as a man or maybe she as a woman were kind of stuck or don't know any better, didn't learn anything far, farther past beyond that stage one. And so we get into hard things in life, we don't ask for what we want or we go on autopilot for so long and then she's just wanting, let's say a level one relationship again. Where the, where the man, a lot of the men that I work with and the men on here as well, like you and insinuated, Cynthia, are past level one. We want a deeper connection and relationship and be able to actually have experience life together. You know, not just sex, of course, or not just children, but life in so many fun ways. That, those are the men that I work with. Those are the men that are on here, I'm sure. Uh, I want to acknowledge that, as in the chat was said, some yeah, women are some not women there. Are not there. <laughs> So give me some feedback on that for the guys that would say, well, my woman is at level one or 1 1.5. You know, how do, I, how do I think about that as a man ongoing in my life and in the world? That my relationship, mm -hmm. that she's at a one or 1 1.5 potentially right now. How can I think about that? Well, I think in the last call I mentioned that, you know, if famous systems theory talks about people can be in like an over-functioning and under-functioning role. And the like functioning, they're at like a level three and this person's at a level one and this level one person, um, that they get something out of being there and this person gets something out of being there. So you can always start to try to sh shift energy just by raising your own work, holding your own work, doing your own vision your own space as a man and you're really inviting this person to like step forward up with you because you are modeling um you're modeling he modeling health you're modeling desire you're modeling stamina you're modeling modeling vision and in that instance that's the strongest and most powerful Thing you can do to invite the person along for for the ride and if you are doing all of that work and you feel really clear and good about that and that you know you're getting help you're getting support and that other person won't and can't budge then that's not your fault and it's just time for a different kind of conversations and aligning with what you want in your life mm -hmm. Beautiful. So just leading, being, you know, just, which is not easy, but leading, knowing what you want and vision, that can bring about those changes that you're even wanting in and of itself, right? So we can affect yeah. things just from ourselves. And, and that's more of the act of masculine, like we were talking about too. Yeah, absolutely. And we do this as just human beings, like we're modeling for each other all the time and you know again we'll all use the grocery store analogy even though that's not a, a major place that we're all visiting a lot lately we are we are leading everyone we interact with we are modeling our best lives and the people who see us even for a moment are learning from that mm -hmm. beautiful so one last time i want to say if you want to connect with cynthia or me or ask other questions no strings attached we're not trying to sell anything Go ahead and put your email into the chat box here and um, we'll, you know, you can get in contact with us and we'll, we'll send out an email by tomorrow. So go ahead and do that. I want to open it up. We have about seven minutes left in our 90 minutes today. Uh, there's no hands raised. I didn't see another, I'm sure there was other questions that I missed in the chat and I have to apologize for that. But if you have a question, let's go ahead and open it up. So 
it, maybe you didn't know how to raise your hand and you want to jump in now, go ahead and unmute yourself. So this is where we, we see how long 56 men take to uh, lead into a question here, Cynthia. I uh, see what about a wife who has mood swings? Oh, good. Beautiful. Yeah. Go for it. Are her mood, I guess I would love to ask, are the, is there like a pattern to her mood swings or does it feel like out of the blue and you have no idea why it emerges that way? So if you want to jump on, you're the letter C out of the blue to him. Out of the blue, okay. So again, we, uh, like we've been talking about ver like verbal communication and connection a lot and having conversations. And this is a, um, this is a like sit down, like let's have coffee together. And at a time when there's not a um, big dramatic emotion going on and saying, hey, I really, I've been noticing that this emotion comes up um, and I'm, I'm confused about it. And I would like to know more. Can, can you help me understand? Can you share with me what's going on with you? And if she says like, I don't know, I don't even know what's going on with me. Um, asking deeper, well, can you tell me more? Like what, what happened before the mood swing? What were, um, what were you feeling in your body? And I, and I may not be giving you the right prompts for your situation, but every emotion in a woman is not, it's actually not arbitrary. There's, there's real thoughts and there's real feelings behind it. It just tends to, if she's not communicating, it's like building up. So it builds up, builds up, and then there's a trigger and explodes and builds up and builds up, trigger and explodes. So it's, it's kind of time for you, you two to have a conversation about um, like letting her know you really want to hear like what's building up inside of her. Okay, tried that, she apologized, but slipped back into it. Okay, so again, this is where that leadership and relationship is. If she slipped back into the mood even after you talked it, talked about it, it's having the conversation, hey, I know we talked about this before and I'm noticing this is continuing to happen. Let's, let's continue this conversation. Is there anything you would add to that, Jeff? I was thinking about that. Um... Well, it's in the moment. I'm wondering as a man, how I, I would do a little audit on myself of how I'm acting in the moment of her upset or when these things happen out of the blue to me, when it seems like they're out of the blue and she has these mood swings. Uh, the first thing that I would, as a coach, what I would have, see, you know, the, the gentleman little letter C here would do was to, to journal for me immediately after those things happen. So to do your best, whatever that looks like right this moment, and then journal for me after it happened. Because, and also journal how you reacted, what did you say? And that way you can, you don't feel like you're stuck. It's not so I can be perfect and have the perfect response and all this BS that isn't true. It's so you can start to have a flow of, of conversation with yourself. So you don't feel like you're just collapsing in on yourself and, and your thoughts are gonna go crazy, I'm sure. Did I say this right? Did I say that right? Just getting it out of your head for most of us, most of us is an amazing first step. And the, the second part of the audit is, am I able to be in my breath? Am I able to be present? Am I pushing my belly out when I'm breathing when she's really upset right now? I can have success within my own physical self, even if it doesn't look like it's going well out here. <laughs> you know, earlier I said, the, you know, anger would shoot up my neck and I, I'll, this Hulk would come out. Well, if I can stop myself and take a break before I release the Hulk, that's really good. I may not say the perfect thing, but if I can understand what my body looks like and I'm not making it 10 times worse because I look like a dickhead, you know, I'm like, Fuck, why are you? I could just sit there and judge her or I could be there with her and understand what's going on and try to be uh, that man I want to be. So that's, that's the next step here. Obviously this is complicated. There's men that have said that 
you know, their wife has had trauma in the past, or they're in a particular incredibly stressful phase of life, which makes sense. But in that moment, I want to ask myself, am I staying calm? What does my body look like? Um, for those of you that I wasn't able to get to, some of you I sent a private chat to say, hey, what your, I love your question. It's a longer question. And I'm happy to jump on the phone or Cynthia, jump on the phone with you next week if you like. So just make sure your email is in the chat. And I see that that gentleman did that. So yeah, so maybe the last just thing to say, jumping up what you just said, Jeff, was um, we, as human beings, we have this amazing ability to, um, it's, it's, the, it's called like mirror, mirror neurons. So however we are in an emotional state in our own body, it is actually guiding the other people around us, their bodies to be in a similar emotional state. And that's why, you know, say you're having a rough day and you, you'll get a hug with someone and it's like, oh, my whole body relaxes. It's because the cells of your body are responding to the other cells of your body. And I would imagine that every man here is not only a, a powerful leader like they lead with their being but also they're very in tune to the people around them and how other people are feeling so the more that you are holding your your peace and your strength in your body um you are guiding you are guiding other people you are guiding the woman in your life and how they're holding strength and peace in their body that's so fantastic you just even a hug or even just recognizing that you can get that from someone else in some other way. I'ma tell you about a woman whose heart is sunshine, whose body burned hot. I'ma tell you about a woman whose cold is tundra with some frozen eyes. I can tell by the way she moves that she cares and it's lovely too. I'ma tell you about a story of a broken man, how it be girl, how it ends, but he didn't understand.